Folks let us do a demonstration of Wi-Fi technology. I uh, will show you an overview of what is out here and then you can we can also look at the source code. So, here is what the demonstration is. We have a module called 8266. This is a very powerful um, uh, I would say an SOC it is actually you can look for node MCU. Uh, it actually integrates ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi module. You can see the Wi-Fi is here right. It also has a 10 bit ADC. It has a UART port which essentially you can use the UART port for your development purpose to dump the code onto the ESP's uh, flash. You can use this uh, UART module here. Uh, also in this demonstration is a RTC module which I will show you along with temperature uh, which actually acts as a temperature sensor as well and that is connected over I2C bus. And uh, since you are talking about an RTC, uh, we are obviously it means that even if you power off you should be able to maintain the date and time and so on and therefore there is a battery associated with it. Now uh, the 8266 uh, module integration into node MCU is so powerful that it has a complete TCP IP stack running on that system. Essentially when you have TCP IP stack you can configure the IP address uh, quite easily on it and it will provide you a lot of services okay. The Wi-Fi for instance uh, you can configure the Wi-Fi either in the access point mode essentially you can associate it with a SSID. In our case we have given the name JJ. So, you will see that JJ as one SSID that is given to it or um, essentially if you put it in AP mode several clients can connect to it. So, I will show you a picture equivalently. This is let us say uh, an AP uh, access point that you may have seen in homes in your homes or in any public uh, places. Uh, there are many clients which can connect simultaneously and then there is a backhaul connection this is a wired connection usually okay and this might go to an internet gateway okay this might usually go to an internet gateway. Uh, so, this is internet okay. So, this clearly indicates and these are all the clients. Let us say you are in a coffee shop and there are several of you holding your mobile phones uh, and uh, each one of you are browsing the internet. So, what is actually happening? You are connecting to the nearest wireless access point. Uh, maybe the name of the coffee shop will be uh, what you see and uh, maybe there is password, maybe there is no password depending on how and how much security is required and then you start browsing on that right which means each one of these clients are connected over the to the internet as simple as acquiring an IP address from this AP connecting to it and then sending out data packets. So, essentially all of that is possible easily with uh, this kind of embedded module called node MCU. Now, uh, if you talk about uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, existence and uh, AP existence you also have to note that in the AP mode the AP can actually also invoke applications which are running on 8266. One such application could be the web server application okay. You can also run a web server application. In other words the full web server application running on 8266 means you can kick up a browser here. You can keep kick up a browser here connect over Wi-Fi and access data of ESP8266 over a HTTP link okay. You can acquire the data over a HTTP link. So, that is the nice thing about it and what data are you acquiring? You could acquire the temperature data easily through uh, this browser link I suppose. So, that is uh, definitely a possibility. Now, if you have to know uh, from what we discussed in this module on Wi-Fi, the hardware, receiver sensitivity and all that you may have to know all that because if you are looking at design you must understand those specifications very well. Therefore, let us look at the data sheet of ESP8266 which is part of the node MCU that you can buy okay uh, and that is indeed this is the heart of the system here. So, let us jump in and uh, go into the details of ESP8266. You can see that this uh, 8266 can support 802.11 BG and uh, N. So, uh, all this uh, support is very much available to it and um, as we also discussed that it can do soft AP promiscuous mode and all that. What is interesting is the receiver sensitivity okay. Look again very carefully you can get minus 91 dBm if your data rate is 11 Mbps, but it is down to minus 75 uh, dBm if it is 54 Mbps. 
and it is down to minus 72 there is a 3 dB difference uh, where if you choose another modulation scheme called the MCS7 modulation scheme. What that MCS7 indicates is another, another story it is just uh, uh, very high data rate uh, modulation scheme but at that high data rate you have to get a compromise is not it. The compromise is you lose 3 dB in the uh, in the receiver sensitivity a loss by that is essentially half the sensitivity down the sensitivity is down by half between uh, MCS7 and the uh, 54 Mbps uh, links. So, it takes a beating on that but that was obvious from whatever we discussed last time that Rx sensitivity is a parameter of interest to us and you have to look at the data sheet to understand in detail about this particular parameter and uh, operating voltage is given mm, then uh, antenna is mentioned ok. So, here are the features which I was discussing station you can configure it as soft AP, soft AP plus station also. So, all these possibilities exist of course, security is very much part of it and it is uh, bundled into it. Protocol support IPv4, TCP, UDP and HTTP we sp spoke about browsers kicking up and asking data from temperature sensors via the HTTP server and that is something that uh, is easily doable with eight ESP8266. What are the typical applications? Well, there is a huge number of them and uh, in our lab uh, we have conf we have used ESP8266 for uh, energy monitoring applications. So, that is uh, particularly single phase energy monitoring applications. Here is a footprint of how the chip looks and here are the pin definitions of uh, the chip and here is a picture of the functional diagram block diagram of ESP8266 what you see on the extreme left is all the RF part middle is the baseband part and the extreme right is the MAC uh, phi and all the registers which are required uh, for configuring the uh, you know not just the CPU, but also the, the baseband and other RF related parameters. Of course, it has a bunch of interface uh, pins uh, UR, GPIO, I2C and so on. So, all these are very much doable. Uh, ADC is also there and uh, uh, all these are very much available for interfacing different type of sensors. ADC yes of course, there is a 10 bit I mentioned SPI is there and I2C is also there. If you read this document you will clearly understand that all the parameters are easily listed there and uh, it is useful for you to read them as thoroughly as possible. So, there are details about the Wi-Fi radio and baseband, there are details about uh, the uh, Mac, uh, you did see the MCS7 out there last time, but now you see them in detail that it is in the 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth. So, essentially giving you much higher data rates okay, as compared to uh, the normal uh, schemes which are indicated. So, this is a special uh, data rate a MCS modulation encoding scheme which ESP uh, supports for high data rate applications. There is a huge discussion on the power management which is the heart of this course. So, therefore, I would strongly encourage you to read up on power management uh, section of this article. You have active mode, modem, sleep mode, light sleep mode, deep sleep mode and so on. So, all these modes are indicated the uh, corresponding current consumption is also indicated. So, look them up in uh, great detail understand that in great detail. So, that you really know that uh, several levers can be pulled. So, that battery life of this uh, monode MCU which integrates ESP8266 really survives for the 10 plus years kind of lifetime we are looking at. Well, at least the 10 plus years is indeed our goal uh, whether it is doable is another story, but it is always good to think about something which is uh, long uh, in what you want to achieve. All right, these are pin definitions for SDIOs and so on. Uh, I2C is also mentioned I, I gave you this idea already PWM ADC is here. So, you can see the read the ADC in great detail here it does talk to you about uh, the 10 bit uh, precision SAR ADC um, and uh, some definitions are out there ok. Then uh, the electrical specifications are also given along with this and power consumption RF power basically con consumption for different data rates and all that is mentioned. You can see that it is not uh, in the order of even a few uh, 1 or 2 milliamperes, it is in 50, 100 milliamperes or 120 milliampere kind of range, uh, which is uh, quite an amount of power compared to other uh, Bluetooth and uh, Zigbee kind of uh, or 802.15.4 kind of radios. 
So, you that is a point to be noted there and then there are characteristics of the uh, Wi-Fi radio as well. Um, the impedances are mentioned here so that if you have to match with the external in, uh, antenna this might be of some help. Output of power amplifier is mentioned, the modulations the sensitivity is mentioned and so on. So, that is about what this ESP 826 is, is and uh, do spend time reading about it so that you get some familiarity before you actually start using it. Now, let us switch to the demo. What I show you here in the demonstration is essentially two parts here. So, if you look back at what I had mentioned to you, there is a temperature sensor and an RTC module right and now that equivalently is shown here in this picture here okay this is that module all right now you have the node mcu which is shown here on this screen here this is the node mcu and equivalently the node mcu is shown here you can see in this picture okay you can see that this indeed is the node mcu here which has the 8266 esp system which is actually the cpu is from tensilica and all the features are all out there Wi-Fi, then flash, then um, all the configurations that you need to do for uh, UART for dumping the code and so on everything is out there. So, this is that module. What you see here this cable is indeed the UART cable which is quite similar to what I have shown you here in this picture. This is the UART cable which essentially be used for configuration and also for uh, let us say you want to display something that because ESP 826 is really headless in that sense. So, if you want to have a screen you may want to also use the UART for providing the screen capability for it. Now, let us switch to the software part of the code. Uh, what essentially we will show you is the different libraries which are there and you can see that uh, the list of libraries are shown out there. Uh, let him just highlight it and then you will see. Uh, so, this is a demonstration from Pratyush. Uh, Pratyush Shukla is from the lab. So, he is showing you a demonstration of this. So, you can see that these are the main libraries which are part of this uh, code. In fact, this code will be available to you. He is kind enough to release this code. So, you can use it. If you have a node MCU with you, you can actually use this as a starting point. Okay. Now, you see that there is SSID and password of your Wi-Fi router. Uh, you could mention it there. You can see that the SSID chosen is JJ board underscore AP. Okay. So, here is something that you can imagine. Uh, let me draw this picture. Here is an AP right sometimes you might have seen your college uh, uh, ssid appearing there quite like that this is the uh, ap part of the esp8266 and its ssid so if you come close to this uh, esp8266 module you will see you will see on your mobile phone you will see this uh, ap showing up that it can allow you to connect okay so that is the nice thing about it all right then you have uh, other parts essentially going to um, uh, the I2C protocol part which is uh, shown here. The I2C is required because you are actually acquiring the temperature. right? So, what is the demo here that we have? The demo is you acquire the temperature over I2C bus and then you uh, should be able to uh, you know broadcast that or transmit that uh, data using Wi-Fi onto a mobile phone. So, that will tell you that this module can easily communicate to mobile phone and can communicate to mobile phone it can connect to any Wi-Fi compatible device to transfer its data. So, the demo is what? Demo is acquire temperature data, pass it over I2C bus, give it to, eight to uh, node MCU slash 8266 uh, module and that module in turn should be able to uh, send its data out to uh, nearby mobile phone. Okay, and uh, that you should be able to read that uh, data on the mobile phone that is essentially the demonstration here. Okay, so, you can see that um, several parts of the code are shown here. So, there you are the acquisition of temperature is happening there he is acquiring the data and then he is perhaps going down and he takes the data puts it into I2C bus and then transmits it and there is a static IP that he has assigned to this uh, node MCU. Uh, it is a IPv4 address I suppose. So, that uh, he knows that it is the that is the IP of this machine of the machine that he is using and uh, yeah. So, there you are Wi-Fi and so on and then if connection successful show IP address in serial monitor. So, you can check a few things simple things like 
whether the IP address is configured correctly, whether it is given you something that is not clashing with other uh, IP addresses in the same uh, Wi-Fi network and so on. All these tests are done. Then you update the HTML page uh, that is hosted on the static IP uh, essentially. So, you will actually see whether the IP address is correct and uh, whether it is configured properly without any clashes and so on. Yeah, then you move down. Now, there you see um, you see that uh, it is uh, now basically uh, displaying the uh, date, uh, it is displaying the time and it is also displaying the temperature value and this is now being shown on the laptop by the way, which means you are actually displaying it, we are displaying it via the UART. Let us see whether you will be able to get these values also on the mobile phone. So, let me show you that. You see now it is showing you the date time and also it is giving you the values. So, what is the takeaway from this little small demonstration that very easily you can interface uh, simple systems and you can uh, simple sensors acquire data and transmit the data over Wi-Fi to um, your mobile phone. See folks it is while it looks very simple as a demonstration. Do not forget that if you have a home Wi-Fi router, this module can directly upload the uh, sensor values directly to the cloud okay. and uh, since it has TCP IP stack, you can also load uh, other IoT protocols like MQTT or uh, COAP and get data uploaded directly. After all, uh, you uh, MQTT requires TCP right and this is running a full TCP IP stack. Therefore, it is a very powerful uh, way of um, uh, you know acquiring data and transmitting data and Wi-Fi is so common everywhere that uh, with low power capabilities which I showed you in the data sheet and with the simple configuration that you can do with the, uh, the system you should be able to easily uh, get going with respect to at least a simple sensor like temperature sensor to be acquired uh, successfully. So, now let us see how this whole demonstrable system actually works. Uh, because we have to show you something that is going live. At the moment this module that you see here is actually reading 24 degrees. So, what we will do is we will start heating this uh, module, this temperature uh, bring some hot air very close to the module. You can see that it has jumped to 32.5 uh, degrees already right. This is a hot air gun and what we did was we started heating the module using this hot air gun this one, this is the hot air gun okay. So, we can see this demo again. We will use this hot air gun, it is already pretty hot here. Go close to the IC where the temperature sensor is there and uh, that already will directly display the values to you. That is about what we wanted to show you. Thank you very much.